Okay, today's rehab session is about getting your glute med firing when you've got hip problems. Now, we've got a lot of people that come in to our clinic who either have hip label tears or osteoarthritis in the hip. And the ones that are losing the range are the ones that are also losing the glute med problem. Now, these people tend to lose hip external rotation, so the knee going outwards, so this movement here. Now, when we test them, so this movement here is usually lost. So if you're one of these people where you, you've lost that knee ability to go outwards into external rotation of the hip, and it's sort of like very, very tight, and you compare that to the other side, the other side's full, and then this side is stuck, this may be a hip joint problem. Now, we've got some people who are either label tears or very, very old stiff hips or problems in there that are chronic or early degenerative changes where they've lost that range. Now, these people will have, nine times out of 10, glute weakness. And a lot of people focus on the external rotation and trying to get that better, but they struggle because they don't have the range. So if they don't have the range, it's very hard to get your deep lateral rotators working, but the glute med is the major problem for when people are walking. And you'll see people with glute med problems if they tend to lurch into like a Trendelenburg gait. And what I mean by that is, if this is my weak hip here, when I plant my foot, the muscle, if it's strong, is going to lift up my hip so this foot can clear the ground. Okay, so when I walk. If this one is weak, what will tend to happen is my hip will drop. Now, my brain will then say, well, to get my foot through, I have to somehow lift that foot off the ground. So I will lurch my body to get it through. So normal walking, you don't need to lurch because the hip comes up and the foot goes through. Hip comes up, foot goes through. When you have someone who has, say, hip arthritis, and they've lost their glute med, it's not necessarily pain that's making them lurch, it's weakness and the body compensating that makes them lurch. So they'll tend to go, like this. Because they have to use their body to lift their leg because their glute med is not doing the job. Now, it's very hard to get a weak glute med firing with some exercises, especially like you can't just do it just from squats. So I've got an idea for people that are really struggling or have got really significant weakness, what to do in the gym and what to do at home. So the way you probably test glute med a little bit just without doing any standing work is side lying. So we'll get them doing this exercise, and this is also a good warm up exercise, is they go from this position and one have one leg back, point the toe down, have the heel up, and they're gonna try and keep the hip forward, not hip back. If you keep the hip back, you'll start using the front, which we don't want. If you have the hip forward, so you're sort of stacked, meaning one hip is over the other, one pelvis is over the other, I should say, you're gonna lift that leg up like that, and that's gonna switch that on right there, because that's hip abduction, all right? It's gonna do hip abduction and internal rotation, okay? So this is actually quite a good warm-up exercise. Now, you'll find people with arthritis, like significant, will be super weak. They'll really struggle even trying to lift that. So we've gotta get some sort of activation, so that sort of movement is gonna be good. What they'll find is they can't even do this movement because they don't have the external rotation. So doing clams may not necessarily be great for you if you don't have any external rotation range. Whereas if you've lost external rotation range, you can still do abduction. It's just about how weak it is. Does that make sense? So that could be a really good warm-up exercise and also a little bit of a tester to see how that muscle was functioning. Now, the exercise I get people doing is our ball squat, but Usually, because that muscle is so weak, they can't do a conventional normal ball squat. They have to do an isometric just to light it up. And the best way of doing that is using a Swiss ball. Now, I'm going to give you some options today. Of if you don't have a Swiss ball, you're not in the gym, what do you do at home? Or what do you do when you're out and about? Maybe you're going for a walk and you want to do it. What do you do? So let's show you with a Swiss ball. Now, the traditional one leg ball squat is standing absolute parallel. Okay, so I need to be snug into this ball, and tricks are, the middle of that ball needs to be where my knee is. Okay, so don't have the ball up on your thigh. Okay, have it on your knee, and have it so, if you're standing there, you're very snug, it's very tight there, okay? Now, the, the leg I'm training 
is the outside leg. It's not your inside, it's the outside leg. Because we're trying to train your glute knee to do the exact same function as when we're walking. All right? We want to have, have it to be able to switch on when I raise my legs. So imagine if I was walking, that's when I want it working. Okay? So we train it like we want to use it. So at this point here, I want to be able to stand on one leg and bend that. Now some people are so weak and they're unconfident, would we'll go, I don't want to stand on my hip, I'm just going to lean into the ball. So I don't want you leaning into the ball because that's taking weight off the leg and not doing anything. All right? So if you've got enough strength that you can pick that leg up and stay there, you might need a bit of assistance from the wall, like a bit of balance. I don't want you to lean on it, but just a bit of assistance to go, can I balance it? It's just a safety net. Even just standing there, I can feel that turning on. So you may find if you're weak, it'll light up that right glute med. If I'm standing on my right leg, it'll light up that right inside, and you'll feel that switch on. That's the isometric work I need. That's the movement I need to keep that ball up. Now, what I don't want you doing is this sort of thing, okay? What I want you to try and do is keep those two knees level, because that's what we want to swing our legs, okay? Keep those two knees level, and here's the strengthening part. Push that knee directly laterally into the ball, and then that lights it up even more. I can really feel that working. Now, this sort of isometric work, or static work, needs to go for about 30 seconds at least. You want to try and build up to a minute. You might even be only able to do 10 seconds, if that, but you've got to start somewhere. But your aim over time is to get to that 30 and then try and get to that minute. And if you can get to that minute, you've got enough strength to do a proper squat, okay? But the isometric stuff is what I want people to start with. So if you don't have a ball or you're so weak that the ball is too hard to push at, you don't have enough strength to actually push in, what you do is do against the wall. Now, for safety's sake, I'd probably just use a pillow, I would say. So grab a pillow from it in your house, okay? And then do the same thing. Pretend that's a ball. You're going to be very close to the wall now, but make sure you don't lean on the wall, okay? One person I do have who's an absolute gem, she is not exactly 20 years old anymore, but she needs to lean on the wall just to fire it up, okay? She's an exception. But I want you guys to not go for that. I want you to see if you can always be just that little bit away from the wall. It's always there to lean on if you need to, but I want you to try and be away from it. Again, try standing on that outside leg, firing that up, bending the knee, okay? And I can still feel that working. I just don't have much push power here. So in the ball, I can really ram that in and line it up. At this point, I can only go so far. So even just doing that, I'm gonna feel it there. And the first level of this is just not even squatting, okay? Don't even worry about that. We're just trying to switch that on and get some strength, some base strength up so the walking gets better, and then you can work on going through that squat and improving it over time. So that's what I do. Now, if you're out and about, of course you don't have a pillow, just choose a wall. You could even use the edge of a park bench, okay? Just get up there and push your leg into it. The thing is, there's no point just standing there on one leg, all right? You do that anyway when you're walking. You need something to push against because that's how you're gonna get that lateral resistance for that glute med. That's how it's gonna function, all right? And remember, Doing abduction stuff like this is all well and good to switch it on. You could use that as a warm-up, but it's not functional training, meaning I don't do this when I'm walking, okay? I do this when I'm walking. I stand on one leg and level my pelvis. That's what that muscle does. So if you're dropping and lurching, okay, that's what you need to work on. You need to train it like you're gonna use it, all right? And that way, against the wall, is gonna be probably your best bet to start with and just put enough pressure through there, okay? So that's my tip for that one. Hope that works, see you next time.